Welcome to the Embrace Fertility podcast slash YouTube channel. I'm Naomi Wolfson, the founder of Embrace Fertility, and today we're continuing our fertility expert guest interviews. Our guest today is Nicola Salmon. She is a fat positive fertility coach and the author of Fat and Fertile. She helps fat folks navigate getting pregnant in a weight-obsessed world and advocates for change in how fat people are treated whilst accessing help with their fertility. Nicola uses her unique fat-positive framework to support people in finding their own version of health without diets, advocate for their bodies, relearn how to trust their body and believe in their ability to get pregnant. Today we're discussing the topic, why does my doctor keep telling me I have to lose weight? Is this true? So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you about this. Oh, well, I think it's such, it's such an important topic and something that I haven't covered before on the podcast or the YouTube channel. And you really are the expert in this field and you have your book and your course. So I'm really excited to introduce you to my followers. So would you like to start just telling us a little bit about your personal journey and how you got into doing this work? Absolutely. So I was diagnosed with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was 16. Um, and the doctor told me that I wouldn't be able to get pregnant. So this was 20 years ago now. Um, and obviously at 16, like that's a bit of a strange diagnosis to get. There wasn't the internet around, you know, in the same way it is now. I had no idea what it was. I didn't understand the impact that it would have on me. Um, and I wasn't looking to start a family then. So that kind of information around not being able to start a family didn't have like an immediate impact. But looking back now, I can see, you know, like it impacted my self-confidence in my body. It impacted my grades at school, like my just my confidence in who I became as a person. Um, and also the decisions I made around my health and well-being, because, you know, it's yeah, it's a really strange one to have that kind of information and expecting problems and expecting things to be difficult coming along. So that was definitely kind of looking back at my story, the first kind of highlight, as it were, as to like why I would start to look at hormones and fertility and all that stuff. Um, but then I went to uni, did the uni thing. Um, and then randomly for a for no like such a strange incident happened to me while I was studying um, that led me to start acupuncture. So I witnessed a traumatic incident. I was struggling with depression, with post-traumatic stress. Um, and I tried acupuncture. There was no rhyme or reason behind it. I've never had it before, but it had such a positive impact on my life that it kind of led me to training as an acupuncturist. Um, and through that training in fertility and specializing in fertility because of my own hormone stuff. Um, and then I was just doing that work. I realized that there was such a huge component, you know, as you, all your work entails around emotions and around mindset and around, you know, that was such a big piece that was missing from my acupuncture fertility training um, that I trained as a coach. So I did specific fertility coach training um, and then I got pregnant. And then it was this really strange situation where we, I was planning to get pregnant. I was expecting things to be really hard. I was gearing myself to go on another diet to do this because, because of my PCOS, I'd yo-yo dieted my whole life. I'd been bigger and smaller. Um, and then because I had struggled massively with my mental health, I'd used food as a coping mechanism, put on more weight. And yeah, I was expecting to have to do all these things before I was gonna be able to get pregnant. And I just got pregnant and I spent the whole pregnancy anxious terrified because I was expecting something to go wrong because I was fat and um it was during that first pregnancy that I realized that you know I wanted to have like a home birth and I wanted to have a water birth but these options weren't accessible to me because I was in a bigger body and it was really the first time that I delved into things like risk and looking around body autonomy and like what choices did I have you know could I ask for these things or were they you know were they allowed to deny me them and it was really the first time I realized that yes you know as people we we get to make these choices around our bodies and it was such a big revelation because before then 
I just done as I was told. I just went to the doctors. They told me what to do. I did as I was told. And, you know, like I didn't question that authority or that kind of power dynamic between doctors and patients. So it was big. It was scary. And then when my son was born and when he was kind of growing up and learning around food and his body, it really highlighted to me how poorly I was talking to myself around food and my body, the way I was talking to my body, treating it, the way I was talking about food. It's just something I did not want to pass on to him. So that's when I decided to quit dieting, to quit weighing myself, to kind of stop this kind of endless cycle of thinking about food, stressing myself out around the way I was looking. Um, And luckily at the time, it was around the time that I'd started um, like posting on Instagram because of my um, business. And I found this incredible group of people who were in fat bodies like me and were talking about, you know, how they were living their lives without diets. And the more I fell into this rabbit hole, the more I found research that shows that fat bodies aren't unhealthy, like we're told all the time by the media, by everyone, and that you can get pregnant when you're fat and that you can have a healthy pregnancy. And, you know, it just blew my mind open. And then I realized that nobody was talking about this in the fertility world. Like the only things that you see in fertility books on fertility websites is if you're in a fat body, lose weight. Like that is the only advice that we're given. And I was like, you know, I didn't feel qualified. I didn't feel prepared, but I knew that I had to start talking about this because that is just not good enough. Oh, thank you so much. And it's just everything you're saying there is so poignant because I was then was got diagnosed as a teenager with endometriosis and being told as a teenager oh yes really unlikely for you to get pregnant Mm -hmm. and it does and I was the same at the time I was kind of like oh okay yeah you just get on with life don't you (laughs) yeah it's like it does have that looking back now I realize like how much that's colored I remember like when I first got together with my husband like telling him like really early on I was like oh I know I know this is a bit weird to like mention because I've only just sort of started dating, but I might, you know, I might not be able to have children naturally. It was this little thing a that I had for, for years. And it, yeah, it, it, it has such an impact. And that, and have that education as well. I think within the fertility world, it's very much like I've got so many clients that say they've been to the doctor and the doctor's only response to every single question they ask any health issue is lose weight, lose weight, mm-hmm. lose weight this way so they don't get and it's like this just blocker this wall that they're like well no like this is happening and this is different and this is different to how it was before and there's just that lack of respect I think that's Mm. the kind of key isn't it it's like there's no it's just this blanket thing that just kind of labels you as like oh that's the issue yeah no there's all this other stuff going on so why is it that um so sort of society is labeling Mm being in a bigger body as unhealthy can you talk to us about like why yeah that is? so it's murky and this is definitely not my kind of lane but I'm you know there are so many ways that this has come about for our society so there is like our historical um kind of religious background so all this idea around gluttony being a sin And around, you know, you have to be pious and you have to do things in moderation. And, you know, there's real religious roots to, you know, having everything in moderation and, you know, not feasting or, you know, for people you see these, you can imagine these ideas of like rich folks, you know, having all their feasts and this being, a, you know, like frowned upon by the church because it's such a waste. And, you know, so there's those roots in our society in terms of, um, you know, how religions saw food and saw bodies. Um, but there is also a massive, a massive racial element to this as well, because, um, because of the way our bodies are diverse, are, diver- are diverse, and because, you know, um, purely biologically, black bodies are often bigger or can be seen kind of in a different light in that way, um, then this idea of privilege of class of you know white folks wanting to have power over people in black bodies um they can use this idea of thinness to kind of differentiate between black and white so it just became another way of holding privilege over people that we wanted to hold privilege over so it's definitely not kind of my area of expertise but this goes back hundreds of years like you can 
see like even from kind of in America when the pilgrims went over to America there was lots of ideas around what good foods and bad foods were so bad foods were the indigenous foods of the people in America and the good foods were the ones that they brought over with them so like there are just so many ways which our history has shaped how we see our bodies and how we see food but right now there is a massive kind of growth around this idea of clean eating and around this idea of there are it's like a hierarchy of food and again it's quite classist because people who are very privileged they've got power you know they've got money they're middle class they can afford to have like yes yes they can afford to buy their quinoa (laughs) and all these health promoting foods that we've labeled as superfoods right they can afford the the kale and the avocados and you know all these different foods whereas people who are you know in poorer, poorer backgrounds and working class like that's not part that's not something that's achievable or sustainable for them um so we've made health to be this thing that if you can buy with power with money with time that that folks in uh, higher privileges so who have the excess money and time can do um but actually when you look into health and what determines health it's a tiny tiny sliver so the center for disease control in america did this like determinants of health study and they found that like more than 50 percent of what determines your health is to do with where you're born the class you're born into um the socioeconomic um things that are going on around you and like 20 percent of it is to do with lifestyle choices so the food that you eat and the lifestyle you have and the way you move your body but like relationships takes us a big part genes biology you know all these other things that we don't think about make up our health and it's this tiny bit that's actually this big thing that we've created around what health should mean for us and that's so fascinating because like you said you know you were told that you know you wouldn't be able to get pregnant Mm. and then you did get pregnant and it and it happened very very quick you know it happened yeah as as it was meant to at that time yeah and just shows as well there's kind of any time we kind of give ourselves a label because I think very much with infertility we can kind of wear that as a label as well it's Mm -hmm. like I'm overweight I'm infertile and it's like we're not these are things we're giving ourselves a label and then our actions and behaviors are being led by this false label that we're giving on ourselves and I love that you don't now um you know aren't doing the yo-yo dieting it's like my training as a cognitive hypnotherapist when it comes to you know, people wanting to work with you to lose weight. It's never about the calorie counting, how mm-hmm. much exercise you're doing, what foods you're eating. That can be part of it. And, it, you know, about educating someone if they don't understand, um, like having a ball, you know, eating a rainbow, if they don't understand that, yes, that's an educational part of it. But actually it comes so much more into the relationship you have with food. And like you said, for, well, I think for a lot of us, our culture is very linked to food is a comfort, food is a celebration. If you think all of our main festivals, um, you know, Christmas, Easter, everything involves, let's just buy as much food as we can, like load up the fridge. It's all about eating together and celebrating. And there's so many ties with the emotional and eating, but if that becomes a dysfunctional relationship that you're reaching for unhealthy foods, you know, to fill what's inside so that's what cognitive hypnotherapy looks at is the relationship with food and how much um you know how you feel about your body because if you don't love and respect your body it's Mm. really hard for you to then look after your body and like you said all those messages that you don't want to pass on to your son it's only that for so many people can be the moment that they go oh oh when it's just you talking to yourself you're just like, well, this is, this is just how it is. You don't even question it until something is brought, something different is brought in that then you're, you're kind of like, oh. Mm-hmm. It reflects it back to you, right? And it's, you know, it's really interesting the way you talk about celebrations because food should be celebrated. Like it's part of our culture. And I think the way that it happens is that we deprive ourselves for so much of the rest of the year. You know, like regardless of whether you're in a bigger body, a smaller body, so much of our food relationship with food is based on restriction and celebrations are really the only time we feel that we can almost like let loose. So that is why we have this kind of like you say, like buy all the foods in because it's the time we feel we give ourselves that pass. Whereas 
if we give ourselves a pass the whole year round, we don't do that in the same way. Like we buy, the, I bought the celebration foods at Christmas, but I didn't have like boxes and boxes of chocolates because I, I give myself chocolate the whole year round and it is not a big thing anymore. And the one thing that leads to that binging is that restriction. So by releasing the idea of unhealthy foods and healthy foods and, you know, just letting all food be equal and equivalent and, you know, there's no moral value attached to it it lets go of that idea of having to like stock up and have it all at Christmas because you can have it whenever and it's so freeing. And it's that thing of if you're spending your entire time depriving yourself, especially if you want to, you know, if you want your body to nurture and nourish mm. new life and nurture a baby, but you look at what you're doing to, your, to your, yourself and if you're not nurturing and nourishing yourself, how can you expect your body to then yeah. do that and that's a, a huge piece and that can be nurturing nurturing nourishing not just food but sleep comfort um, all the pieces right because they all interlink yeah because that's the thing there's no there is no mind body we are mind body like we're you know it's there's all, no boundary is there it's just it all interplays with each other and that's fantastic that you've added the you know the mind body coaching onto your acupuncture so you are like covering because I, I find that as quite a lot of trainings that are kind of really focused on one thing whereas actually you need to treat the entire person not just mm. this is this you know one bit so that is fantastic and how, I think how, like you said like that's the problem with medical you know like very western medicine is mm. they look at their productive organs they're like okay we're going to treat the uterus or the ovaries and <laughs> yeah. again it's that you're missing the whole like well here's the stomach and here's the digest you know like you're missing all the bits around it right things if your body is is being deprived of the nutrients it needs or the rest it needs or the love it needs whatever it is your body is then in chronic stress mm -hmm. trying to cope with the fact that it's dehydrated hungry tired and so many of us j just live in that state thinking it's like thinking it's normal to feel tired all the time and it's like that's your body telling you something is like really you know awry needs to be looked at so how has this had an impact on Fertility. So going, um, so if people are struggling with fertility and they're in a bigger body, talk to us about the impact that this has. So the biggest impact it has is kind of twofold and it's all around emotions and our thoughts because first of all, we're being told this story that it's going to be hard for us to get pregnant. So what that does is that then embeds those beliefs into our brain of like, that's going to be difficult. I have to lose weight before I can do it. I have to follow this particular diet. You know, we're putting all these conditions on us being able to get pregnant. And what the research shows is that fat folks get pregnant at the same, you know, the amount of fat folks that get pregnant is the same as thin folks, but it takes them longer. And part of that reason is because we're putting these conditions on and we're not letting ourselves almost try or even want to go down that road before we've kind of ticked all these check boxes of things that we should have done. So we should have lost weight. We should have followed this diet. We should have quote unquote got healthier. And then the other huge piece of this is how we're treated by healthcare professionals. And what happens is like you say, folks go to the doctor and they're told to lose weight. So what happens is First of all, they know that's going to happen because it's probably happened to them in the past. So they will leave that appointment for as long as possible because it's horrible to go into that position and have to deal with that. You know, you're made to feel ashamed and judged and you they make so many assumptions about, you know, they don't ask generally questions like, what are you eating? Like, what's your lifestyle? Like, they'll just assume that you're sat on the sofa all day and you're not eating foods that will support your body. Um, and they'll judge you basically so you're kind of already gearing up for that and especially if you've got PCOS it's mm. not as easy as change your diet like it, if, the, if the doctor has any concept of what PCOS is and the complexities of that and the, then the, you know the differences of how your body processes sugars etc mm. it's a whole other level that's it and it's you know it's more of a side effect than it is a cause um but anyway, yeah, so you'll go to the doctor, you'll be told to lose weight, and therefore that's leading to these delays. And it's not me, it's meaning that people aren't being tested and treated for potential problems because you know we all suffer health conditions. Um, you know, fat folks and thin folks alike will suffer from PCOS, endometriosis, you know, maybe they'll have a you know different shaped uterus or blocked tubes, or you know, 
sometimes there's stuff going on which means you can't get pregnant and for fat folks that's being delayed and delayed and delayed obviously you're getting older as these delays are occurring and it's meaning that you know their chances of getting pregnant are reducing as time goes on because they're not getting the appropriate care that they need so it's this huge problem that fat folks are just not being treated um, with the care, you know evidence-based medicine because as much as you can say go on a diet the research shows that you know for 95 percent of folks diets are only ever a short-term measure um, and most folks will then go on to put that weight back on often plus more um, and it leads to disordered eating eating disorders depression anxiety you know it's not a risk-free strategy and it is not evidence-based by any stretch of the imagination and what's the the emotional impact of this having on on people huge the emotional impact is absolutely enormous because these folks are you know going to try and get access and help from their medical professionals and they're being turned away and they're not being given you know the care that they need and they're feeling shamed and judged and Brene Brown has done a lot of really interesting research on shame um, and found that it causes a lot of kind of chronic inflammation which we know can lead to endometriosis PCOS problems with fertility um, you know, and it, it, you know, it really impacts people's mental health in terms of so many folks, you know, then need to go into antidepressants and it increases their anxiety around doctors. So then they'll go have high blood pressure when they go and see their doctor because of this increased anxiety. Like it's this never ending cycle of feeling bad about their bodies, but then they go to the doctor to try and get help and they make them feel worse and then they feel worse about their bodies. And it's this never ending spiral of shame. And what can people do? So what is the answer? Talk to us about um, talk, talk to us about your book to start with and what, um, what you've written about. Yeah, so my book is Fat and Fertile and it's really kind of an introduction to the framework that I have and that I work with people because for fat folks, like doing one thing is not going to fix the problem. We need to kind of look at it kind of in a multidimensional way. And so the first thing is around kind of getting rid of those diets, getting rid of the idea of weight loss and just finding ways to nourish and nurture your body in ways that feel good. And we've already talked about so many of those. It's just like eating foods that make your body feel good, resting more, drinking more, you know, finding movement that feels good. That isn't a way of like punishing your body because for so many folks, that's the relationship we have with exercise. So it's about finding those things. And then a big part of my work is around teaching folks how to advocate for themselves, because when you're going into healthcare appointments and you need support um, and you're being turned away, it's such a difficult conversation to have. And actually, there's so much evidence and research out there supports the fact that fat folks should be tested, should be treated, can go through IVF with success. Um, but healthcare professionals are really Adam, you know like avoiding it and they're not looking at the research and they are just you know have this blanket bias that fat is bad fat is unhealthy we cannot help you so it's about teaching people how to have these difficult conversations so that they can advocate for themselves and get the care they need um going like armed with um the information in the mm -hmm. studies so if they're if the doctor's saying to them oh you know come back because a lot of people are given like a figure they're like oh come back when you've lost like x amount yeah and it's like but yeah, then the studies show that isn't the case. And again, mm -hmm. like you said, it's that them wasting precious time and not just in terms of like the fertility window, but your life, it, putting your life on hold, trying to get to this, this figure that actually the difference in the impact that that might have on treatment or trying to see is minuscule mm -hmm. or just not part of the, shouldn't be part of the equation. And actually, sometimes it can have a detrimental impact because for folks, they want to do this quick, right? Like if you want to get pregnant, you want it to happen yesterday. So you are going to take the most extreme measures you can think of in order to reach that goal. If you if the doctor tells you you need to lose weight and that's going to help you get pregnant, you will try anything and everything. So this is like juice fasting. This is like very low calorie diets. And we know, you know, it makes absolute sense that these are not good for fertility because you're not giving your body the fuel and the resources and the nutrients it needs to grow another human being so it, it's almost like the reverse and it just it just blows my mind that doctors would even consider suggesting these things to people okay so that's the so we talk about yes yeah, three mm. things that can help so that's two of them what is the third thing that people can so the the final bit is all around you know regaining this trust with your body and looking at the beliefs you hold around it because 
for folks who go through fertility, you already feel this kind of like at war and this battle with your body. And this, you know, for people who are fat is, again, it's, it's adding this other layer because you're already told that your body is wrong, that your body is too big, that you need to make your body smaller, that you need to change your body. So it's about rebuilding that relationship with your body so that you feel you can trust it. And, you know, refiguring those negative beliefs that you have around, you know, I'm too fat to get pregnant or I can never get pregnant in this body. And just really shifting that dynamic so that you are then able to make choices around your health and well-being that encourages, you know, that nourishment and that nurturing that we talked about earlier. So, yeah, just reframing all the stuff that's going on in our heads. And that's so, so powerful because obviously coming from a, a cognitive therapist, our thoughts literally create our life. So we never, ex we can only ever experience our lives through the lens of our own thinking. So anything that is happening to us, we will then process like, through all our, all our thoughts, all our beliefs, our previous experiences, then shape and color how we feel in the moment and therefore the decisions we make about the future. So this is, this can be such a massive turning point, I think for people, hopefully people listening to this interview a sort of having those light bulb moments of like oh my god yeah that happened to me and that's how I'm thinking about my body mm. and, and that's a big part of my work as well is getting people to really learn to love their bodies again or learn to maybe love their bodies for the first time mm -hmm. ever because if you're not loving your body again that just impacts all the decisions you're making and if you can start to turn and go like you know what is going to be best for me right now you know what support i can get what am i going to eat how much sleep am i going to get is my you know is my work helping me is my relationship helping me all these different facets not just so people can get pregnant quicker but so that their life now is as enjoyable as it can be because the emotional pressure of all of this you know on top of if you already hated your body and then throw fertility in infertility in as well is like oh well hang on and that was such a massive thing for me that I hated my body because I felt like my body was broken it was letting me down mm. and like and I have that thing I was like when I was 19 and that doctor said to me it's like oh you've got endometriosis really unlikely you're ever going to get pregnant without IVF we need treatment if at that point he'd said oh you've got endometriosis but there's a huge amount you can do with diet and lifestyle you know x amount of people do get pregnant naturally and everything's fine, but P.S. There is this thing called IVF as a backup. How different yeah. would you know that? What was it? Twenty years or something until then? It was you know ready to have kids. So you offer an amazing freebie um, to help people. Tell us about that. So it's the Fat Person's Guide to Fertility, and it really just takes you through three super simple steps to kind of starting this journey. It's aimed at folks who are maybe still dieting or still feel that, you know, they've just been following this kind of advice from the doctors. It's not getting them anywhere. They're feeling rubbish about themselves and they just want to try something different and they just want to, you know, dip a toe in and see, you know, could this be helpful for me? Could this be a useful way? of changing things and shifting things because you like you say like people get stuck in in a life that they feel like is on pause like for fertility and for folks who are fat you know like dieting takes up your mental space your wallet you know it takes up all your money it just takes over everything and you know it's so nice to let that go and to feel that you can actually enjoy life and food and maybe not freedom right now, but, you know, like absolutely just in, you know, having the life we have now, because, you know, whilst you can absolutely take steps towards getting pregnant and doing all the things you can, like really the only time we have is now. And if you are miserable, if you are really struggling, then taking steps and prioritizing yourself first is the most important thing you can do towards getting pregnant. Fantastic. And yeah, you have, so you have your, your book mm -hmm. and that's available. So once people um, sign, oh, tell us about um, where you are. I presume you are on social. <laughs> so um, the place I hang out most is Instagram. I am on there 
most days, most, multiple times a day. Um, but yeah, that's where I share most of the stuff. I share a lot of research on there, a lot of tools that you can use to kind of, kind of take steps to feeling better in your body and talking to doctors and, you know, all the tools and steps that we've talked about already. So my handle on there is Fat Positive Fertility. Fantastic. And tell us, um, so your book is available as well through your website, isn't it? And is, is it on Yeah, Amazon? it's on Amazon. Um, so that's something that people can go and check out if they're interested in my work and they want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, on my website, nicholasalmon.co.uk, you can grab a couple of free chapters if you want to check it out first. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a good first step to if you want to learn more about this. Fantastic. And tell us about your programme. So the program that I run at the moment is like a group coaching program. So it's a really small number of folks. But what we do is we go through so many tools. You have kind of one to one coaching as well. But the big part of it that people really love is this group element, because for so many people, like talking about this is hard. But when you're in a fat body, people who are going through fertility stuff don't understand that kind of fat element to it as well, because it adds a whole this whole different lens to it. Um, so finding other fat folks who are going through fertility stuff is so empowering and feels so amazing to be able to talk about these struggles with other people who understand and who you know aren't just going to say, well, have you thought about dieting? Because, you know, <laughs> obviously <laughs> we don't want to do that. Um, so, yeah, so it's like a 12 month community program as well. So people can stay in for a long time and they just get that support they need throughout fertility, but also throughout pregnancy because these struggles don't stop for fat people once they get pregnant they still suffer from treat being treated poorly by their healthcare professionals so all these tools that we learn throughout the fertility then go on to be helpful through pregnancy and beyond fantastic and, and like you said you really wanted to have a natural birth and a water mm. birth again that was something that many doctors are just denying you based Absolutely. on oh the, you know there's there's a risk we can't do that and there's, and that's an add-on as well, because especially if people have had um, a pregnant through fertility treatment, all the, you're less likely to end up having um, a natural birth if you've been through fertility treatment. And that's not for any particular reason. It's purely because if you've conceived through fertility treatment, your file has a big risk factor. Like high risk, yeah, yeah like high it. risk, therefore, pretty much if your body you know doesn't pop that baby out on your due date they're like right sorry nope that's it mm -hmm. and that's something so as a as well as being a cognitive therapist i'm a hypnobirth practitioner and run a um hypnobirthing online course and that's something that i'm really looking to help address that if you've been through physical treatment you're probably older you've probably had um you know some kind of fertility health issues in the past which means that led you on to have the treatment you've got less confidence in your body as it is so there's mm -hmm. all these factors but there is absolutely no reason why you can't have a natural birth why you can't have a water birth why everything can't be absolutely peachy but it's about being able to advocate for yourself so that's something i include in my course i love that you talk about having the studies like in your back pocket so you can go mm -hmm. in and go well no actually there's very minimal evidence that shows I need to be induced a week earlier because I had IVF. It's basically bollocks. So it's really yeah. good to know <laughs> these things. But if you don't, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So if you do Absolutely. have this information, you can you can present that to your doctor and be like, here are the actual facts. Because at the end of the day, GPs are general practitioners. They're mm. not experts in this field. And you can become your own advocate and your own expert in learning about your body. Absolutely. And um, you know, for fat people, this isn't something that, you know, we shouldn't have to do these advocacy the work because our systems should be in place to support people from an evidence based lens. Right. But unfortunately, as much as we can change as we want to change the systems, it's slow. We're getting there and it doesn't help you right now. So we do need to learn these skills because we're not taught them. You know, we're not taught how to stand up for our rights and, and learn how to do these things. So, yeah, having those that information and those skills is so vital. Fantastic. And if there was one thing you would like to share with people listening today, just like one, like the gem, if you could just say one thing to people, what would it be? 
So the one thing that I would love folks to know going away from this podcast episode is that they are worthy of becoming parents, no matter their size, their gender, their sexuality, their ethnicity, you know, you are totally worthy of becoming a parent and getting the support, the right support that you need to get there, no matter what that is. Oh, fantastic. This has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us and just hopefully opening people's eyes on Mm. how there's a different way to do this and a way that is empowering and can just make you feel amazing rather than feeling like you're fighting against your body. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Please do share this episode with anyone you think might find it beneficial. You can sign up for my freebie on my website, embracefertility.co.uk, which is the Fertile Thoughts Activation Pack. This includes a three minute MP3 to help you combat stress and worrying thoughts while you're going through fertility a beautiful 10 minute heart anchor meditation to help you connect with feelings of joy, gratitude and peace and the first chapter of my upcoming book where I talk about the studies that show the link between stress and fertility and how you can combat the impact of stress. Um, Yes, like I said, share this interview with anyone you think might benefit and come and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Embrace Fertility.